Today, I'm going to show you guys how to throw a two-piece jar. So I'm going to do uh, start with about eight pounds of clay. I just start wedge this. I'm going to kind of make a cone in the bottom here. Even it out, and then I'm going to kind of roll it. And set it down kind of in the middle. That's going to really suction on my fat there. Start by centering it. I'm really using my body to kind of push this down in because it is so stiff. You always want to use your body. For big clay, that's the most stable position you can use with that claw grip. Get your thumb in there in both hands and really kind of pull that up. The more you can kind of steady your hands or be you know, as steady as possible, you got to do it, especially with a lot of clay. All right, so I'm going to keep this rim kind of fat. I don't want to thin that out too much. And when you're putting water on these pots, especially if you don't have a splash pan, you want to get a wet sponge and go up and down it and then hit your wheel so you don't have any excess water flying off. a bit more. So you'll really want to focus on keeping that top fairly thick. For this, I mean, I want that at least a half inch at the bare minimum. Even if it's thinner down here, I want where I'm going to connect that next pot to be uh, thick at the top there for that joint. So what I'm trying to do is kind of visualize this and see where I'm going to be here. I think I like that. So I want the, uh, so this pot's going to be a little bit taller than double the height. I want it about this height and that belly is going to be a little lower than the center of the pot. Now on the top here before I'm done here, what I usually do is I flatten it and I have a little bit of a, uh, a bevel towards the inside. And then the next section will have a little bit of bevel towards the outside. Funny, uh, Josh DeWeese was doing a workshop and he did the opposite way. So his first pot was angled out and the next pot was angled in. So the exact opposite of how I do it. But I mean, both ways work, it works, whatever works for him. Um, this has always worked for me, so I can't mess with that. And then the last part of this, I'm gonna take a serrated rib and I'm gonna get some grooves in here while it's nice and soft before I start drying this. I'm gonna put a little water on top there. Just stay with that bevel. All right, that's important for when I get to join that. So when I add water to that later, those little ridges there are gonna soak up that water and get softer as I attach that, and that's gonna be my attachment point. I'm not gonna use slip on this. And you'll see that in the next part. So I'm gonna let this dry and I'll be- Okay, before I throw this next section, I wanna measure this. I wanna give myself a little bit of leeway and I wanna go a little shorter than wider. Firm leather hard, but I'm gonna go back on this rim and wet it. So as it stays wet, I'm going to put my, go back into my grooves again. All right, now it's going to stay wet while I work on this section. This section I'm going to throw without um, a bottom. And you want to be as exact as you can with the uh, width. All right, once I get that centered, I'm going to go down. But again, I'm going all the way down to the bottom. I'm pressing down as I pull out. It's really important. You don't want this excess water here when you're opening without a bottom, because if that is super sloppy there with that slip and you pull over top of that, it's not gonna stick. And it's, if you pull out so far and have no dry bat on there, it's gonna fall right off. So you wanna compress this as you pull this out. All right, so. Now that opening is gonna be my opening when I flip this over. But I don't want that too big, nor do I want it too small. Again, leaving this top with enough thickness that I have some options at the end. If you get that too thin, you're gonna be not very happy. You gotta make sure you are able to compress your tops. If you can't learn that skill, this is gonna make it really hard. That compressing is very important to keep that pot straight. If you can't do that, I mean, that, that's one of the most important things you're gonna be able to learn. 
And once you get that down, you're gonna be able to save a lot of pots. Now, I don't have to worry about this staying too thick on the bottom because when I flip that over, all my thickness is gonna be on top where I want it. So now I'm gonna start bringing this out. I'm not real concerned with the shape here. 11 and a half, I need half an inch. So now, if I went past that, it's harder to uh, bring that in and most likely you're gonna have to cut lower to be able to get that width. Start my bevel. I love doing this inside ribbing, especially even pots. I'll throw my general shape and I'll use my little metal rib, the smaller version, and really kind of push that belly out of the pot. And that's really, you get a really nice strong form belly easy because you're compressing as you're pushing that shape into it unlike when you're throwing with your fingers. So I'm gonna hit that and then I'm gonna end I'm gonna, I want that kind of wet and kind of sticky in there. Right now it's kind of wet the water and I don't want to push too hard I want to keep that kind of nice and sticky in there. Alright so now I'm gonna place this to the side bring another piece back up. Okay hit this just like I did that last one. So I'm going to wet this and this is leather hard so it's all right I'm just going to lightly kind of work that in. I'm not pushing real hard I just want I'm going to keep that real nice and sticky. And now so this is the part if you have a, a thin bed it's going to bend on you it's going to kind of talk out on you. So now you can kind of flip this I know this is pretty darn close to my shape. So even if I'm, I'm, so I'm off like an 8 16th of an inch over here, when I connect these, I'm gonna belly that out and I'm gonna slide that over with the roof. And then putting pressure up here with my other hand so I don't warp the shape. About through, yep, that'll pop. So you can see I have this thickness up here. I mean, that top's that thick. So that gives me a lot of flexibility in what I wanna do up here. So. I don't know if I'm gonna make this a jar yet or a vase, but I have the clay up there to make a lid seat onto that. Now, this little skinny piece of clay here, I, I always cut that off. Now, before I do anything up here, I'm gonna go back into here. I don't wanna wet any of that exposed area there, but I'm gonna wet above and below the joint. Same as the inside and outside. I'm gonna force that into round here as I keep my rib here. It's really important to kind of work this joint to make sure that's sealed. Inside hand is kind of pushing down that lip over top of the inside just so that kind of gets that fresh clay over that leather hard clay. Down rib and then I'll up rib to kind of really get that clay kind of worked over and those two sections sealed. Now I'm going to pull this to where I want it. Right, so when you're doing this, you don't want to just let clay, that water run down in there. Wet your sponge really good and hit both inside and outside. If you get too much water on the inside, it's gonna flake that bottom down, it's gonna do some weird stuff. So I mean, even if you're getting water down the sides in here, it's gonna re-wet re -wet that and it's gonna, it could loosen that up and that could fall on you. Don't have to do too much down below, but as I come up, I gotta add more pressure because it's thicker. I'm gonna start working this shape. This is kind of off a little bit here, so I will turn a little bit of that off, even that up for my lid seat. Support on the inside and outside and push down with my thumb. I don't want that lid seat inside to be too thin. I'm do this inside ribbing to mesh everything up. You can see how that inside ribbing, you can really mesh that shape up. And this is uh, thick enough where you can kind of trim that to kind of really refine that. Finish up the lid seat. All right, it's a gallery style lid. If you haven't seen that video yet, go back to YouTube, I hope cat you third. I'll trim into that too. I'll show you guys when this dries, I'll show you the trimming I do. All right, now I get the shape of my pot. Uh, I'm going to trim a little bit. I left it a little bit thicker at the base so I can trim into there. I didn't cut it off the wheel yet, so I can trim that without having to flip it over and reattach it. Get this off. Not bad. And there you have it. Uh, I'm gonna throw in a lid for this, maybe some handles. 